Greetings, I'm Dr. Will Hunter. Currently, I'm an associate professor at the University of Memphis. And on behalf of CEDAR, I'm presenting topic hip hop critical pedagogy, walking you through what a hip hop course will look like within the College of Education. The table of contents, introduction, what does the literature say about teacher prep educational systems, stay in your lane, figure out your own lane, what is hip hop, hip hop as a critical pedagogy, placing it in action, example of the process, concluding thoughts and questions. As an educator, I always wanted to figure out how can I keep students engaged? How can I connect with students? And one of the ways I did this was through the incorporation of hip hop. I didn't know that I was incorporating hip hop pedagogy within my self-contained classroom, supporting students. But as I became accustomed to the literature several years ago, had an aha moment. Yes, I was incorporating this information as a teacher. So today's presentation will focus on hip hop ed at the higher ed level and considerations for the incorporation of hip hop ed within K-12 learning communities. So what does the literature say? It's essential for emphasis to be placed on instructional practices based on teacher education. They're designed to improve academic behavioral outcomes. One of the challenges as an instructor for me is to figure out in a three-hour block how to ensure that the content is engaging and how to ensure that no matter what the subject is, whether it's classroom management or whether it's a methods course or whether it's a course that talks about students with emotional behavior disorders or a service learning course or even hip hop ed course, how do we ensure that the content is engaging for three hours? We can't talk about student engagement, but then lecture for three hours straight. But what the literature also says is, is the emergence of teacher-based practice being emphasized in general in special education pre-service special ed programs. The research have highlighted the importance of collaborative learning environments and learning beyond the classroom. So what I'm going to share with you today is an example of how, with a team, we incorporate a hip-hop ed class within the College of Education at the University of Memphis. One thing that we connect our hip-hop ed class is to one of the works of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., when I work with different professional developments or different classrooms, whether at higher ed or K-12, I asked the question, did you know that Dr. King was an educational philosopher? And this is a percentage that says yes, but also it's a percentage that says no. And one of the key themes I take from Dr. King's last book where he was assassinated was, where do we come from here? Chaos, our community. Powerful book. And within one of the quotes I take is the educational system functions as a system of exclusion. Ironically, I'm a special ed professor, so that brings volumes. But when we talk about incorporate hip hop within the classroom, first piece is to stay in your lane, figure out your lane, respect the movement. I consider myself a hip hop head. I've been 86, 87, when I really felt in love with hip hop. And right before what some hip hop peers would say was the explosion of hip hop on the scene of 1988, when you had artists, Eric B and Rakim, Big Daddy Kane, Public Enemy, EPMD, some of those artists where it just really exploded on the scene, MC Light. So again, I fell in love with hip hop in the mid 80s and even engaged in MCing myself, even though the career was <laughs> short lived. And I'm an inspiring DJ now, so I'm always connected to hip hop in some type of capacity. However, I respect the art, respect the form to ensure that I know what I'm talking about before presenting it in a lesson, not depending on necessarily my knowledge, but actually putting in the work and research and study and ensure that connections are made. If you are interested in connecting hip hop ed or hip hop pedagogy within your classrooms, rather K-12 or college level, respect the movement through the research. There's researchers out there that's written books that centers on hip hop ed. But let's figure out what hip hop is. Let's take a journey. And as you see, some of the MCs that I have up, Roxanne Shante, she has a show right now on Sirius XM Channel 43. Rock the Bells, uh, Have a Nice Day show comes on, I believe, 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. One of the pioneer MCs, then I go to the bottom, the teacher, the professor, KRS One, one hip hop icon going up to the top at the middle with Ms. Laura Hill, singer, hip hop artist, MC, lyrical assassin. Going down to the bottom of the middle, Outcast, Big Boy, Dre 3000, arguably one of the dopest hip hop groups of all time. Going into recent times, Raspily, a lyrical assassin, but has topics that connect with women and men, just really get you to think. One of my favorite hip-hop groups of all time, Wu-Tang is for the children, Wu-Tang Clan. Now, 
if someone's not on the list, does that mean they're not hip hop? No. But from an MC artist or I don't have DJs up here, just really taking the time to study the history of what hip hop is through music, through DJing. Hip hop is a cultural movement that started by Black, Latino, Afro Caribbean people in New York City in the 1970s. As you see, who circled in a picture, DJ Cool Herc. Hopefully, it's still on Netflix with the Get Down. That talks about some of the early beginnings of hip hop from a fictional standpoint, but it talks about DJs and crews and battling. It's two seasons, dope series. There's a lot of interpretations of what hip hop is, but from a hip hop versus rap perspective, this quote stands out from Shaka Shaw, September. 19, 2013, Ebony Magazine. In terms of a distinction and quality, there are MCs creating art and contributing to the culture. And then there are rappers who are packaged products of record labels who are contributing to their own coffers with little regard for progress or contributing to the art form in its evolution. So when we think about hip hop and MCs, it's contributing to the art and to the culture. And what are the four elements of hip hop? You got MCing, kind of went through galleries and MCs that well known. DJing, producing, creators of the music back in the 80s, 90s, early 2000s, the DJs were the ones that cut the record or mixed the record scratches. The DJs has evolved to doing parties all over the world or being producers, actually producing the music. Tagging with graffiti, the artwork that you may see in urban centers, on trains, on buildings. Some are elaborate, exquisite, some not as, but still uh, expression of art. B-boying, dancing, break dancing. Uh, to my knowledge, I think that's going to be a living sport in the near future. Also, what's left out of here is just the sneaker culture, the clothes associated with hip hop, just the aura of hip hop. The fifth element was talked about a lot in some of the hip hop formulated from Wu Tang Clan and other MCs and groups is the knowledge of self, the ability to self reflect, to figure out yourself in terms of where you stand as a person, as a human being. How are you going to contribute to society? What are your strengths? What are areas that need to be enhanced? How do you connect with the community? How can you support the community? Hip hop is connected to elements of critical pedagogy. It's critical pedagogy that's connected to the culturally relevant pedagogy, culturally sustaining pedagogy. And according to Dr. Gloria Lyson Billings, the three tenets, focus on student learning, intellectual growth. So how are we going to grow? What are we going to learn from this experience? Developing a student's cultural competence. As I indicated previously, hip hop is part of culture that incorporates elements of urban life, rural life, metropolitan life, just from the perspective and lens. But at the same time, when you look at hip hop, non hip hop reference culture in a corny way or a non authentic way. The connection to knowledge itself, developing students' critical consciousness. Why are we here? Looking at the system. Does the system support me? Does the system that creates oppression? Critical consciousness provides that form to examine. And a quote from one of the great philosophers, James Baldwin, the paradox of education, as one becomes conscious, one begins to examine the society in which he is being educated. So as we want students to engage in knowledge of self or to think critically, then it doesn't stop within the classroom. Hip-hop is seen as a critical pedagogy. It's designed to create a form for hip-hop to be understood as a means to expose and critique social inequities, specifically access to opportunities within education. And citing Dr. Rich Milner, where he talks about opportunities, not the achievement gap, but opportunities to get access to material. Hip-hop is a lived experience. So how do we connect our experiences as educators to the students that we're working with? Something recently where I present and talk about is the water cycle. And I'm in Memphis, Tennessee. And one of the controversial things that's happened is a pipeline that companies are trying to place within a region of Memphis that will affect the communities in a negative way and think about environmental pollution. And that sparks a conversation as far as, again, talking about social inequities. And is this connected potentially to Flint, Michigan, or Jackson, Mississippi, in terms of quality of water? Also, Within the community classroom, the teacher is a facilitator. They're not the one driving instruction. So as a facilitator, there's a form for student voice. Decolonizing the curriculum where cultural competence is embedded within the curriculum, meeting students where they are, and then the development of critical consciousness. Placing in action. So again, as an educator, former K-12 teacher, I incorporated hip-hop ed, hip-hop pedagogy without knowing what it was. 
We wanted to bring into action in terms of a classroom. Had opportunity to work with my colleague, Dr. Derek Robinson. At the time, he's at the University of Memphis, assistant professor of leadership. And we were sitting at a function for a school district and heard a song was used to sample Eric B. Rakim, also Heavy D and the boys. From talking about that sample, a conversation evolved into what it would look like to have a hip hop ed cross interdisciplinary course between leadership and instruction curriculum leadership within the College of Education. And that's how it started. But it wasn't an easy process, though. It was Mondays, one to four, but it happened right before the pandemic. And we had a street team. So before the pandemic, this kind of give you background. The course was an elective, so the students within our College of Education were locked in and didn't have room for elective of this course. So what Dr. Robson and I did, basically replicated the hip-hop MC DJ street team, and we went out to the Student Union Center where they ate or congregated or met within groups, and we passed out flyers and discussed the course. So it gave us the opportunity to do something that we haven't done I actually had a chance to be within our community and talk about the course, get feedback from the students and see what they were wanting in the course. So again, it's an opportunity for student voice. And within the course objective, I can kind of summarize that through culturally relevant pedagogy and critical media pedagogy, the analysis on the art of hip hop, dance, DJing and rap was the foundational theme of the course. And there are times within the course where we spend time looking at lyrics of MCs, interpreting art from tag artists, thinking about the scientific elements of production of DJs, and then also what was involved with b-boying or the dancing, the kinesthetic movement and kinesthetic intelligence, conversations of what students bring to the table. All that generated within the course. And at the end of the course, there was a sum to project. It wasn't your traditional paper pencil, but it was a powerful, impactful presentation from our students of their interpretation of hip hop and a connection within the community of Memphis through the use of spoken word, poetry, emceeing, tagging, juking, dancing. Juking is a big thing in Memphis. So it was a lot of colorful conversations and enlightening conversations. And I learned from the students. So we had a guest speaker. We did a performance at our University of Memphis campus school. We did a lunch at Central Barbecue. You know, Memphis is known for barbecue. And then we did a tour at the National Civil Rights Museum. Actually, two weeks ago, we just got finished with our lunch at Central Barbecue and the tour at the National Civil Rights Museum here in Memphis, where it was curated specifically on connecting the music and the movement and the plight on the civil rights to the Black Panther movement as to the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee movement, the movement within the 70s, late 80s, public enemy. So that was a very powerful presentation. And also, Dr. Robinson and I, we did our class sessions via Zoom. We used the social media platform, Instagram Live, to actually DJ, curate songs, and talk about our educational journeys and give students a chance to engage through a social media platform. Again, the final project was via Zoom. We had a local national recording artist who's also a special education teacher, Derek Webb, but goes by Webstar as an artist. And he came and shared information about his career. Former football player too. So it's an all-star individual all around. But again, the purpose of this course is to engage the students, whether through guest speakers, whether through multimedia platforms, whether through field trips, whether through some of the projects to connect with students. This is a picture of our first class where we did a show at the campus elementary school. And it was during Black History Month. And we talked about the influence and impact of hip hop on Black history, overall U.S. history. And then we had segments within this show where the students were engaged. So two or 300 students in the auditorium that were engaged and almost modeled what a call and response hip hop concert would look like. The students had fun, the teachers had fun. It was an engaging experience. And there's pictures from our field trip at the National Civil Rights Museum. And then with the final project presentation, the students gave powerful multimedia presentations, provided narratives centered around elements of hip hop and its connection within the community. And one of the things that I write about and present about is the job of the MC and DJs to get the crowd engaged. So think about as an educator, how do we keep the crowd engaged, our students engaged? How do we keep them connected with the curriculum and the content? And this is where I'm making the parallel between the job of the teacher, the MC, and the DJ. 
So as a conclusion, hip hop can be used as an educational tool, but also as an opportunity for students to use a critical lens on how they're being educated within their community. Also be used as a tool connecting the teacher with the students through life experiences. And this concludes the presentation. Just wanna leave off with the thought of, if you're a teacher thinking about incorporating hip hop ed, please look at some of the resources or authors I cited within this presentation to help you get the party started in terms of infusing hip hop concepts within the classroom from a higher ed perspective, same way. But again, hip hop is a lived experience. It's a celebration of culture. In my humble opinion, you're engaged within this lived experience. You're having fun while learning from each other, then the content knowledge will come versus strictly the traditional way, where we have seen that the traditional way may not be the way for all students to excel. Make sure we meet students where they are.